الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي اضعف ما حميده جميع خلقه كما يحبه ويرضى سبحان الله وبحمده سبحان الله العظيم سبحانك لا علم لنا الا ما علمتنا انك انت العليم الحكيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري وَحْلُ الْأُقْدَةً مِنْ لِسَانِ يَفْقَهُ قَوْلِي اللَّهُمَّ جَعَلْنَا دُعَاةً إِلَيْكُ وَإِلَى رَسُولِكَ أَمَّا بَعْدَ فَقَدْ قَالَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى فِي كِتَابِهِ الْكَرِيمِ أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ بِسْمِ اللَّهِ الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمِ شَهْرُ رَمَضَانَ الَّذِي أُنْزِلَ فِيهِ الْقُرْآنُ هُدًى لِلنَّاسِ هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى والفرقان فمن شهد منكم الشهر فليصم إلى الآخر الآية وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم الدين النصيحة صدق الله العلي العظيم وصدق الرسول الكريم ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين ومن الشاكرين Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Indeed all praises are for Allah And we praise Allah and we glorify Allah And we send peace and blessings on Allah's final messenger Muhammad Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Indeed a new day has dawned upon us It is a blessed day in the sight of Allah Khairun min al-eid al-fitr wal-eid al-adha it is greater in merits in the sight of Allah than Eid al-Fitr and Eid al-Adha. It is that day that Allah calls insan, Allah calls mankind, those who profess to have Iman in Allah. Allah addresses them in the Quran when Allah Ta'ala speaks out and says, A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan rajim Ya ayyu alladheena amanu إِذَا نُودِيَ لِلصَّلَاةِ مِنْ يَوْمِ الْجُمْعَةِ فَاسْعَوْا إِلَىٰ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ وَذَرُوا الْبَيْعِ ذَلِكُمْ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ That all you who have Iman, when the call is proclaimed on Friday, يوم الجمعة, the day of assembly, the day of gathering, then leave off your trade, leave off your business, leave off all traffics, and hasten to the remembrance of Allah. And the reason being, it is because that is best for you, if only you knew. In life today, alhamdulillah, everyone wants what is best. We want the best in food. We want the best in clothing. We want the best ride, the best transportation. We want the best children. We want the best spouse, the best wife, best husband, the best home. We want to look the best. But our limitations in regards to knowing what is really best for us, this is only decided by Allah. Only Allah can tell us exactly what is best for us. We might think we know, but Allah, He, he is Al Alim. He is the one who is full of knowledge. His knowledge is such that before we can even think about something, he already knew. Before we can utter a word, he knows exactly what is it that we were going to utter. This is Al-Alim. He knows what is going to happen tomorrow. He knows what is going to happen 100 years from now. He knows exactly which part you and I we're going to tread and where we're going to end up. This is within his knowledge. Al-Alim, together with this name, Al-Alim, Allah has a special name also. From amongst all his names, Allah owns a title called Ar-Rahman. 
It is because of this title, you and I, Alhamdulillah, we are still alive today. The Quran tells us that if we were such people who will not sin, Allah Ta'ala is going to wipe us away from the earth and create such beings that's going to commit sins, make mistakes, so that He is going to forgive them. If Allah was to take us to task for the wrong things that we do, believe it or not, my dear brothers and sisters, Allah will not leave a single human being on the face of the earth. We have seen the nation of the past. We have seen the people of Nuh alayhi salatu was salam. We have seen how they rebelled against their messenger, Nuh alayhi salam. We see their outcome. We read it in history. We see the outcome of the people of Ad and Thamud. We see the outcome of the people of Musa alayhi salam, Fir'aun and his army, Haman. We see the outcome of so many people of the past. And when we look at the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah promises his Nabi, Allah promises his Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that no adab, no punishment is going to come upon them as long as he is with them and as long as they are upon the path of istighfar. Subhanallah. We have a way out. We have a tariqah. More than that, Allah Ta'ala keeps sending to us from His Rahmah, from His mercy. Every day we are getting something new from Allah. Every day we are getting something different from Allah. Kulla yawmin huwa fi sha'an. Every single day, Allah is in a different affair. Allah is doing something different for you and for me. Subhanallah, if we understand this deen which is called Al-Islam, we will understand the beauty of this way of life. When someone goes away from our family, even if they go away for a day, when they return from the, wherever they went and we pick them up at the airport, there is a certain amount of happiness. If they go away for a week and they return, and you pick them up at the airport, you realize that the happiness is a little more because they've been away for a week and now you are seeing them again. If they went away for a month and they came back after a month and you are receiving them, wow, the happiness is even more because you are so glad to see them. What about when they leave you for an entire year, some migrate, they go away, they live, and then after a long time, they come back. The joy of that returning, wow. Even sometimes when we go away, we don't think about bringing back anything for ourselves. Who we think about? You think about if it's a wife went away, she's thinking about the husband. Thinking about the children. The first thought when a person goes away is to buy who I have to buy things for. Their self remain last most of the times. So you're thinking about what gifts I can bring for them. And when you come back and you give them these gifts, Alhamdulillah, they are so happy. They are so happy. Everyone is happy. You are happy that they returned. They are also happy that they came back. Allahu Akbar. What about when they have to leave? Now we start to feel sad. We start to feel sad. That is if we had really loved them. If we had really loved them. If they really didn't have any kind of close attachment to you. It's normal. They come, they go. It doesn't matter. This is likened. This example, it is likened to when Ramadan leaves us. When Ramadan leaves us, if you really love the Ramadan. If you really have a love for this month of Ramadan, your eyes will flow with tears, your heart will feel grieved because something that you loved, it's going away. After an entire year, after an entire year, this thing is coming back. It's coming back and guess what? It's bringing its gifts also. It's bringing gifts also for you and for me. 
the kind of joy that we feel when our near and dear ones go and come back? Do we feel that sense of joy now that Ramadan has gone and it's coming back? Do we feel that joy that Ramadan is coming? Or do we, by our next month of fasting, how do we feel? Ramadan is coming with some special gifts. The Prophet says, My Ummah has been given five special things in the month of Ramadan that has not been given to any other nations of the past. It's coming with gifts. It went and it's not thinking about itself. It's thinking about you and me. Special gifts. And the, the first special gift that it is bringing to you and me to make us understand the beauty of this thing called fasting is that the scent that comes out from the fasting person's mouth, that it is sweeter than musk in the sight of Allah. Sweeter than musk in the sight of Allah. Understand who is Allah. And then we will understand that nobody else matters to us as long as this thing is loved and pleasing to Allah, then I don't give anything about anybody else. Allah. Because my first objective in life is to gain Allah's pleasure. If this fast and this scent that is coming out from the mouth of the fasting person is loved by Allah, I have to love it more. Because Allah knows what is best. Allah knows what is best for us. We established that in the earlies. We think we know what is best, but Allah is saying, this is the best thing. I love it. That is one of the gifts of Ramadan. The Prophet wasallam said, do you know that even the fishes in the oceans, the fishes in the oceans, when Ramadan comes, they are making istighfar for you and me. Allah Akbar. Uh, who could think about a fish making dua for you and me? What kind of dua? Oh Allah, forgive him. Oh Allah, forgive her. They are making dua of forgiveness for us. This is coming. This is one of the gifts in Ramadan. It's coming for you and me. Is it something that we want? Is it something that I don't really need that? Allahu Akbar. The third gift that is coming with Ramadan is that Allah Ta'ala, Allah Ta'ala, He decorates and He prepares a special Jannah every single day. And He addresses this Jannah. He speaks to this Jannah. And He says to this Jannah that very soon, very soon, the time is near when my faithful servants, they would leave off they will leave off the life of this dunya. They will leave off the zina. They will leave off the adornments of this world. And they will hasten towards you. Subhanallah. In this month of Ramadan, the rebellious shayateen, they are chained so that they will not hamper our fasting. Huh? We say that when the month of Ramadan comes, when the month of Ramadan comes, we say that the shayateen, they are chained. And still we see brothers, we see sisters engaging in sinful acts. And then we say, but if shaitan is chained, how is it that these people still doing this? Nafs. Nafs. Two things. One is the evil shayateen that whispers. And the other one is what? This nafs. Ourselves, we have to take care. We have to take control of this nafs. It's pulling us towards the waswasa. It's pulling us towards the whispers of shaitan. The nafs. But we have a choice. We can either say, let's go. Or we can say, no, no. The choice is yours. The choice is mine. Subhanallah, and the fifth thing that comes in the month of Ramadan, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says, on the last night on, in the month of Ramadan, those who are fasting, those who are fasting, Allah Taala are going, Allah is going to give them maghfirat and forgive them, forgiveness, forgiveness. 
What else can we ask for? One Sahaba say, Ya Rasulullah, is this night the night of Qadr? Is this night the night of Qadr, Laylatul Qadr? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, no. But it is only right that the servant be given his reward in full. <laughs> what is it that we have done? What it is that we would have done in the month of Ramadan that we deserve to be paid? Are we doing anything for anybody? Nowadays, in order to get paid, you have to be doing some job for somebody. Huh? You're doing a piece of work for somebody and that person will pay you for that work. When we fast in Ramadan, is that benefiting Allah? Huh? When we give up the wrongs, is that benefiting Allah? Everything that we are doing in Ramadan, it's for our own selves. And still, the Prophet ﷺ is saying what? It is the right of the servant. When he has completed the task, that he be paid. That he get his reward. So Allah is willing to even reward us and pay us for fasting in Ramadan. Allahu Akbar. as the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Allah Taala says hadith Qudsi. Asawmuli, fasting is for me. Wa ana adzibihi. I am going to give the reward for it. This is the month that is coming for us. Are we preparing ourselves? Are we looking forward for this month? Are we standing at nights and making dua to Allah? To give us life to witness this month? Are we waiting in anticipation for this month? Or are we holding our heads and saying, and next month of Ramadan coming? This thing don't be easy. This fasting is so hard. Staying away from food and drink. Staying away from our spouses. Wow. What are the thoughts in your minds? What are the thoughts in my mind? What kind of preparation are we all making for this guest that is coming? We know that when the guest comes, they have rights over us for three days. But this guest is not coming for three days. This guest is coming for 29 or 30 days. And this guest is not coming to ask you and me for anything. This guest is bringing things for us. Allahu Akbar. It's bringing things for us. Things that are going to be beneficial for us. Things that we can't do without. Who can do without Jannah? Who can do without the forgiveness of Allah? Imagine even within this night, within this month, one night which is greater in merits than 1,000 months. This guest is bringing that also. This guest came with what? Shahru Ramadan alladhi unzila fiqil Qur'an It is in this month, the month of Ramadan Allah descend, Allah reveal Qur'an Qur'an When this month comes, the Qur'an is open When this month comes, the masajid are filled When this month comes, people start doing good things Charity given here, charity given there Extra fasting, extra salat so many different things are taking place when this month comes. But the question is, how many of us are making preparation to receive this month? Huh? Go to the airport and you'll see how happy you are when your guests come. And how you embrace that person. How you hug that person. How you smile. Sometimes you cry out of joy so long you haven't seen that person. When Ramadan comes, See how your hand remain down. You don't even raise your hands and say, Oh Allah, thank you. Oh Allah, thank you. Look around and you will see. Look around and you will see. There used to be a person sitting next to you. Last year. Look around and you will see. And ask yourself, Where is that person today? Ask yourself, Am I going to wait for when my turn comes? Am I going to wait for that? Say, Alhamdulillah, we are still here. Allah has given us an opportunity. Beg Allah that Allah blesses us 
to live to see this month of Ramadan so we can maximize the month of Ramadan. We can take from the blessings of Ramadan. We can take from the night of Qadr. We can take from the forgiveness in this month. We can take from the Sahri. We can take from the Iftar. We can take the Quran from this month. We can take the turnaround of our lives in this month. This is a month for that. Allah Ta'ala is a sabur. He has so much patience. So much patience that this month for itself, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says that this is a month of sabr. It is a month of patience. And guess what? The reward for sabr is nothing other than Jannah. Jannah. How much patience do we have? How much? The moment someone says something about us, against us, we are ready. We are ready to fight them. We are ready to defend ourselves. We are ready to insult them. Imagine when people make statements about Allah. When people make statements about Allah, what does the Quran say? Allahu walada. They say that Allah has taken a son. Allah says, Subhana, glory be to him. But Allah belongs the heavens and the earth. Everything. Everything is in Allah's obedience. People are saying again and again, Allah has a wife, Allah has a son. And Allah is bearing that with patience. Patience. Imagine if Allah was to take them out. Imagine if Allah was to take them out, take revenge upon them. What would have been the state? But Allah is being patient. We too, we have to remain patient. This is the month of patience. This month is spread through the, the, the entire month is spread with three, three things, three parts. Maghfirat comes. A special forgiveness of Allah comes. A special mercy of Allah comes. And then what? Freedom from the fire of hell. Freedom from the fire of hell. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, if we didn't start to prepare, then we should start today. Don't wait anymore. Don't delay. Don't procrastinate. Don't say what I can do today. Well, I'll do it tomorrow. It doesn't operate like that. You know, if you see a young lady that you love and you want to get married to that woman, you know what's the first thing you're doing? You're making proposal one time. You're afraid to delay because you know why? Our next brother might see her and rush you, as we say. Yeah. Go to the parents and say, Watch, I like, this. I like your daughter. I would like to get married to her. Yeah? You lose out. Certain things in life, we don't delay. We don't delay. Ramadan, don't delay in your preparation. If we didn't start as yet, start now. Open the Quran. Open the Quran. Stand at night, stahajud. A turakat. Start. Do something in preparation for Ramadan. Don't let life be the same routine. No. Ramadan, the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to exert himself. Exert himself. Sahaba were pious predecessors of the past. Quran, Quran, Quran. Imam Shafi alayhi rahmah. 62 times it is stated in the month of Ramadan from cover to cover, Quran finish. This is only one person. Let us not delay. Let us start our preparation now. Remember the five gifts that are coming with this month. The sweetness, the, mouth, the scent in the mouth of the fasting person is sweeter than musk in the sight of Allah. Sweeter than musk. The fishes in the oceans, they make dua for us. They make dua for us. Allah Ta'ala, He has chained the rebellious shayateen. Allah Ta'ala prepares a special jannah and addresses it that very soon my servants would leave out the tribulations of this world and they are coming to you. These are the words of Allah. Allah doesn't tell a lie. Allah is addressing this Jannah and saying this, that the servants, the faithful ones, 
The sincere ones, they will do it and they are coming to you. This is not for everybody. This is for the faithful ones. If you want to include yourselves in that, then we have to be faithful and righteous. And the last thing is that the sins of the fasting people are forgiven in this month. And that is not Laylatul Qadr. That is the last night in the month of Ramadan. We have five, five gifts coming for us. Let us be ready and prepared to accept these gifts with open and it's free. It's free, it's coming for us. We like free things. We are Trini. Trini people like free things. You have to make no effort for it. It's coming. You ain't have to get up and go for it. It's coming to you. Right? You just be ready and waiting. You know what they say? We ready. We ready. Be ready. Right? May Allah Ta'ala grant us the tawfiq. May He give us the ability. May Allah give us the iman and the taqwa so that our hearts will move towards this month. And inshallah, yesterday who we were, Today, we have to be better than that. Yesterday, I was. Today, I am. Whatever I was yesterday, that's the past. Today, I am someone better. And tomorrow, I will be at my best. Always strive for excellence. Always strive to move up the ladder. Don't backpedal. Keep moving forward. Well, akhir dawana. And alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen.